Welcome to ProFX Max. I'm Christopher O'Toole, and thank you for checking out another video of mine here on YouTube. And uh, lately I've been toying around with some compositing inside of DaVinci Resolve, and so I thought I'd do a video on how to do the basics of compositing inside of DaVinci Resolve. This is by no means a complete crash course on everything the Fusion page has for compositing inside of DaVinci Resolve, but this is how to do the very basics of how to get by with compositing in DaVinci Resolve. But before I go on, I will have to say that I hopefully will be doing tutorials on other softwares like Blender and maybe some HitFilm Express and some Fusion uh, tutorials. For you people who like compositing and you don't all like all those different pesky DaVinci Resolve tabs, you just want to go straight to compositing. Now in this video I am using an Action VFX Explosion that is does cost $15 on ActionVFX.com, but you don't always you always don't have to follow the exact tutorial I'm doing and you can maybe go get an explosion off of the action pack line on rocketstock.com or on footagecrate.com. But without any further ado, let's go and get into the video. But since I did stupidly stick my hand in front of the tree at the start of the video and uh, my leg in front of the tree at the end of the video, and since I had to do a lot of rotoscoping there and I figured that since you guys didn't want to watch me do two hours of rotoscoping, I'll just simply cover the basics of what I did. So starting off in Resolve, I just drug in the clip and went to the Fusion page. I then dropped in a Lumicure node and hit Invert because of course the Lumicure automatically wants to key out the darkest of the light and it's the light we're wanting to key out. And adjusted it so that it cuts out as much of the luminance as possible without cutting into me. I then dropped in two polygon nodes and drew rough shapes around both trees, refining them later not to cut out, in order not to cut out the roof. I then dropped in a Merge node and connected the po two polygon nodes to the foreground and the background making sure neither of them were connected to the effect mask input. I then right click dragged the merge node into the Illumicure node as the garbage mat, which masked out all the trees. So basically the video we have now is me jumping over the roof with nothing behind me, no trees, no sky or anything. So this, and so this is basically what we want. Now I will provide two links in the description. One, one so you can download the original video. And, but now with that said, I will go ahead and jump into what you actually do in the, with the compositing inside of DaVinci Resolve. So starting off in the Fusion tab, um, I'm going to go ahead and drag in this uh, background uh, image that we're going to be using from the back for the background, of course, uh, from pexels.com. I will provide a link in the description for this as well. Um, and so, yeah, so let's go ahead and name this, hit F2 or function F2 if you're on Mac and put uh, building. Okay, well, basically, um, We'll basically name all these because it can can kind of get confusing when you're actually in the compositing. You don't know which input is which. So yeah, let's go ahead and name this me. And so now, yeah, we have basically what we need to go ahead and set up for to start compositing. Now, clicking this, let's go and click a merge node. And this will automatically add the merge node onto this. But we want to break that off and make sure this is the background input, okay? We want to connect this as the foreground input. And go and just go and break that off and go and plug it into here, this. Now that I, we now we have me jumping over the building in um, front of these buildings. Now this doesn't work because it's obviously what it is, and I do realize I do have a little bit of camera shake in here, so I could attract when I first hit the roof. Um, so I could attach a um, tracker node and just kind of track this out, but I'm not going to go through this through that with you guys. So, anyways, um, let's go and uh, add a transform node in front of this and just jack up the size of that crazy big. Uh, yes, about good, and uh, kind of adjust it to where you want it. Uh, that looks about good. Anyways, um, so yeah, first things first, let's go ahead and uh, color grade me to the background, okay? Here's me. Um, save this periodically because we are still in the um, beta version does crash on you every now and then click uh, color corrector and um, as you've probably noticed by now if you color correct something down here okay you can color correct the saturation all you want and it doesn't affect the background but then if you color correct, correct any of this it color grades the whole video um, your whole image including your background and this is not by any means what we want so the way you fix this is you grab the output of the of your source footage and you plug it into the effect mask on your color corrector, which is this blue thing. Okay, now it has to be keyed out. Um, it can't be. Um, it can't just have basically a, a an apply mode. Like if you put screen and multiply, that's not gonna. You know, if you if you if you do any of these to say remove a white or a black background, that's not gonna count. It's not going to key. It's not. It's not gonna gonna color grade that. Okay, so. 
Now, back to Color Correcting, if you click the Color Correcting node, and you adjust everything, it now only adjusts your, um, the, the, the video that you're trying to adjust, which is good, it's awesome. So, so um, yeah, color gray, color gray a little bit. It does have a little bit of the sun coming in. Uh, yeah, lift up the gamma a little bit. Ah, nah, that's better down. Maybe turn the brightness and the contrast. Nah, I don't like the contrast high. It makes my forehead way too blown out. Anyway, so yeah, just color create, color correct this to your liking. Now I may do this a little bit more if, um, if, uh, if uh, I was actually doing this professionally, but since for the sake of the time in this tutorial, I won't do, do something too crazy. So, um, now it's time to get to the cool stuff. Let's go ahead and drag in our explosion. Since this is media in one, ooh, good grief, why do I keep on doing that? Yeah, function F2, not function two. Um, same this, X, EXPL. Yeah, that's good. Um, now, we need, now we need this explosion to be in back of me, but in front of this, okay? So, basically what we're gonna do with this, let's see a second. How are we going to do this? Okay. Um, go and add a merge node in front of this, in front of your building, or in front of your very back, in front of your background, and apply this to the background, okay? Then add this as the foreground. And here we have our explosion. Um, yeah, let's get this. Oops, see daisy. Let's go ahead and uh, adjust this to where we want it. And you will have some of this, um, some of the smoke. Action VFX did shoot this at night. This is their explosion volume one, not volume two. So they, um, so this did, uh, see this does show through a little bit, but that's not too bad. Um, and let's just, and let's, let's crank the size up like crazy, okay? Now let's, um, let's find the base of it. Cause I think putting out the base looks cool, okay? Let's see. Uh, let's see, right there. Okay. Not too much because of fires there at the bottom. But anyways, um, but you'll notice if you uh, look at this and we play it. Um, oh, man, look at that. It's all slow motion. Um, it's because they did shoot it in slow motion. And, uh, and our footage is not shot in slow motion. So the way you fix this is just... Shift space, drop in a time speed node, and change the speed to, I uh, figured about, oops, I figured a 1.5 worked pretty well. Ah, it's just a bug with uh, DaVinci Resolve Beta. It, it just ignore that if it pops up. Um, um, so, yeah, 1.5 I figured out works pretty well. And so now, after we hook up this time speed node, you should tell that, uh, see it's just happening much sooner and acting a lot more like a natural explosion would. So, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, now we need our smoke plumes. Yeah, so um, these are free off of Action VFX, um, one of their free assets, and I'm using smoke plume nine and 18. So, I'm gonna start off with nine. I think it's nine that I'm gonna start off with. Yeah, I'm gonna start off with nine. Who cares? <laughs> um, yeah, and I'm going to try to arrange these so I don't get too confused on this uh, thing. Actually, we're going to zoom out a little bit. Zoom out till just you stop seeing them, then zoom in a little bit. Bam, like that. Okay. Now we have a lot more room to work with. And uh, we're going to put these at the same place as these explosions. So um, if we, uh, we can actually drop in another merge node. I think probably right there is good because it, it, they're going to be happening over here. Um, so let's see. I want, well, I guess it doesn't ma mind be matter because um, because we it's going to be over on the right anyways. So um, plume nine, let's go plume nine. Uh, why do not I, I have it in there? I don't even know. So 
Um, just go ahead and plug this in. And oh my goodness, things are going crazy. My goodness. Um, that's because this is a white background. They need to capture it for the smoke plume. And so uh, we're going to need to go over here to the merge node and click uh, uh, multiply. And now, oh, bammo, check it out. We have our smoke plume back. Hooray. And uh, yeah, zoom in a wee bit because I want it to look more natural. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Uh, have it more like cutting out the picture. Yeah, that's pretty nice. And um, yeah, this is pretty good. Now we are going to have another one. I'm going to do something interesting with this. Um, I'm going to do a little rotoscoping here. So, uh, ooh, good grief. Probably going to tell me I have too many characters again. Oh, there we go. It actually worked. Yay. Okay, drop in another merge node right here in the same place. Okay. Then again, drop in our plume 18. Name this plume 18 for sake of, uh, oh, excuse me, unconfusion. That was not grammatically correct, but anyways. Um, and drop this in, and oh, same thing happened again. So just go to merge and click uh, multiply again. Yayo. And uh, we wanted this smoke plume to be in front of this one. I'm sorry, we want it to be behind it. Oops. Okay. <laughs> uh, no sweat, just uh, grab this, shift, drag it out to break it free of everything. Drag this down and select both of these again. Shift, drag it, bammo, right there. And now we'll have it behind it, okay? I know, not much difference, but yeah, I don't know. It probably can tell the difference a little bit. I don't know. Anyways, we wanna grab a really thick part and put it over these buildings, okay? I think, which I think is pretty good. Now, let's go ahead and drop in a polygon node. Drag it in. Um, and um, we're going to draw, draw a rough drawing around these buildings right here, okay? Just rough, real rough. Don't need to go too precise. If you want to go precise, that's fine. Um, I just don't really spend like three hours. Ugh. I just don't really feel like spending three hours on this tutorial. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to draw real rough. Um, uh, real rough um, polygon around this. Do a little rotoscoping here. And basically, the thing we're going to we're going to try to do is act as if um, the smoke the smoke is behind this building, okay? And uh, now, yeah, looking pretty good. And so, honestly, if I was doing this like professionally or something, I would honestly um, most likely I'd key it out into alpha, key the smoke plume out into alpha. And then I would, um, I would then uh, drag it in as an alpha, um, as alpha keyed out, and therefore I could color grade it. But um, again, for sake of time, we're not going to do that. Save it again so it doesn't crash on us. Or if it crashes, we'll have saved it. And uh, right-click, drag your polygon node into your plume, and click Effect Mask. And oh man, oopsie daisy, what has happened here? Oh, it's jumped over there for some reason. You click Invert. Nope. What have you done? Most likely it's a beta bug. Honestly. Wait, wait, wait. No, no. I'm sorry. I'm operating on the wrong. I'm sorry. I'm operating on the wrong. <laughs> Not in Plume 9. Drop it in as an effect mask on Plume 18. Excuse me. I'm sorry. And now, since of course you're going to cut everything out that you need, I'm going to polygon and click invert. And, oh, whoa. Goodness gracious life. You know, I really don't think this is working right now. Oh, there you go. Never mind. Drop it into your merge node. Excuse me. And you don't need to click invert because there it is. And now, um, of course, um, we'll need to adjust the soft edge a little bit. Uh, ooh, yikes. 0 0.05, I should say. And uh, that will um, that will not, you know, maybe somewhere coming around the edges, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, maybe somewhere going around the edges right there, and that's pretty much what that's 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 looking like right there. Um, and again, I could do some more detailed rotoscoping, but um, to me, yeah, I'm just not going right now. And so, uh, anyways, this is how you composite. You got your merge nodes. You got your um, foreground and background. You need to uh, 
think about where to place those. Don't just, you know, freak out when it doesn't work. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, you need to figure out where to place those and uh, to place the, these correctly. You got to figure out where to, you want to mask things if you want to rotoscope things. And uh, yeah, you need to learn how to color grade things, which because color grading or color correcting rather is um, it's going to really amp up the quality of your video. Um, have a bad color correction, um, viewers can instantly know what you've done. So that's how you fix that. And actually, this explosion was actually already pre-keyed. Also, so I actually could drop in a color corrector node. Dropping the input to the blue output. Ooh, yep, blue again. And see if I want to do bam. Ooh, wow, that's way too bright, of course. Um, just jump up the brightness a little bit if I wanted to. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. And um, so that is how you do simple compositing inside of the Fusion tabs. Now, um, as I said before, this is by no means a comprehensive guide to everything. Um, uh, DaVinci Resolve has to offer for compositing, but that's you, that's going to get you by for pretty much all your basic needs for compositing. So I really hope you guys like that video. If you do, hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. And uh, for more videos on everything in DaVinci Resolve, uh, click subscribe.